Lifeline is here to help. Please hold on while we route your call to the nearest crisis center in our network. That's fine. Okay. I got shock treatment. Uh, uh, I'm getting a little tired of this. You volunteered, didn't you? We're paying you, aren't we? Yeah, but I didn't know you were going to be giving me electric shocks. Um, I don't have any information about that. Let me know before you leave what's going on. Well, you got an appointment at 12, don't you? Huh? You got an appointment at 12? I have to leave here, um, well... When you get ready. <laughs> you know what this is? What? I'm Dr. Irving Taylor. I'm a retired psychiatrist. I'm Dr. Arthur Gabriel. Uh, I'm on the staff at both Mount Sinai Hospital in New York and Lenox Hill Hospital. I went on uh, through my medical school, and because we had the psychiatric hospital, I was torn between studying psychiatry and, and my love, which was internal medicine. My first teacher was Dr. Lewis Lynn, who is 95 years old and still active. Uh, so there's longevity associated with using ECT, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> the picture's called Where's Irv? Oh. Has anyone in your family got Beg pardon? Has anyone in your family had ECT done? No. No. And I wouldn't volunteer to take it either. I mean, some people say, well, why don't you take it? I don't volunteer to take anything in medicine I don't need, because there's always a little risk of something. Ladislas Meduna in uh, Budapest. It's that new cat in the barn, Freeman. He's a killer. He had done lots of uh, studies on mice. Try to induce seizures in them and then examine the uh, brains of the mice that he had induced seizures in. Do you have to be so negative about it? Can't you be a little more optimistic? Okay. It might work. <laughs> yeah, but it might not. Hugo Trelletti and Lucio Bini. Uh, had been doing some experimentation with dogs and electrode placement to cause a seizure. They were having some difficulties uh, and eventually they switched to the stockyards uh, of Rome uh, where they worked with pigs and found that if they placed the electrodes on both sides of the head of the pig they could easily induce a seizure. One of my teachers was Lothar Kalinowski, who was with the Trelletti and Beanie. It, it is superior in its rapidity of, of uh, efficacy and in its safety. My name is Kitty Dixon Dukakis. I'm giving you my middle name, my maiden name, which I normally don't do. And I am, um, my profession was uh, as a modern dance teacher and a uh, social worker. I'm Larry Ty, and I write books. And I wrote a book with Kitty Dukakis looking at what electric shock therapy is today, the, as opposed to what it is in most people's popular Imagination. What the fuck is that thing? I'll tell you what it is. It's called electric shock treatment. I was reticent about the word shock because it conjures up such difficult um, pictures for some people. But um, several of the doctors and others uh, convinced me that without that word, people would not know what I was talking about. So. 
I think my book is doing well, and I did not expect three years after its publication to be in the process of, of doing Grand Rounds still and doing other speaking. And we were trying to tell a story that was partly her first person story of having had the treatment and partly my look as a longtime medical reporter. Much like when you're in an auto accident and you have a brain concussion, uh, you sometimes have a retroactive amnesia. Um, but the effects of, uh, there are no permanent brain effects from ECT. Mount Sinai, I've done ECT for more than 50 years, uh, except for my period of time when I was in the United States Air Force, where I also did ECT. New wings for NATO, swept wing thunder streaks. Went on active duty in the Army, they needed psychiatrists. I became a 90-day uh, wonder. In other words, they gave me a 90-day course in military psychiatry and declared me a specialist. Convulsive therapy got a bad name because of uh, Ken Kesey, who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Ken Kesey was uh, a technician in a state hospital in uh, California where he observed ECT then used poetic license to write One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. ECT was bad in those days because it was done without an anesthesia and they had fairly severe seizures uh, that often resulted in fractures and dislocations. Light shine, boys, and send the specimen to Nurse Ratchet. Are you ready? To uh, return back to my time in the Army, we were treating uh, schizophrenia in the Army with uh, two kinds of treatment, with insulin coma therapy and with uh, electroconvulsive therapy. You want to cut the tape for a second? My name is Anita Hagen, and I'm a staff nurse at Shepherd Pratt Hospital, where we administer ECT treatments. Gentlemen, I'd like to begin today. It shouldn't take too long. So I think now that we, we have um, the seizure activity is focused, there's a lot less memory problems, um, the medications are um, you know, titrated for the patient, so it's a much less, um, oh, I don't know what the word is, um, it's just a more humane, tolerated, better tolerated procedure for patients, and it is effective for treatment of depression, so that's the other thing. It is, it is effective, so that's another reason why it has never really fallen out of uh, use. Got out of the Army, got my formal residency training, and then came back to the family hospital and became its medical director in 1949. Over the years, I've taught some of the people who are now very active in convulsive therapy. And uh, then I started to give the ECT when I got back to 1949, in addition, in addition to all the other therapies. We were an eclectic hospital. We did whatever works in psychiatry, both for uh, depression, schizophrenia, and adolescence. We did uh, formal psychotherapy, uh, individual. We did group psychotherapy. Um, we had occupational therapy, dance therapy, art therapy. We tried to get my treatment to fit the patient rather than, than get the patient to fit the therapeutic rut I, I happened to be in, whether it was one particular type of treatment which I was fond of or another. Works on the manic side of uh, bipolar disorder and it works on the depressive side of bipolar disorder. Nobody is quite sure why the seizure does this, uh, but we do, do know from uh, decades of empirical work that it does work. Uh, clinically, there's, there's no, you can't give one too many. You can give one too few. Um, you know, the last email I got from him was very clear and, and so forth, and I think he just Instead of calling the police, he should have called us, you know? I mean, <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, maybe it's a good thing that he's in there. He can get a little boost and feel better, you know, get his mind straight again. So, I don't know. Okay, Dr. Reagan's calling me. i got to answer this. I'll call you back. Because medications, on average, take uh, around a month to two months uh, to get a full response. And 
for, for people who are really thinking about suicide, um, many times that's, that's too long to wait. Um, so I think that it doesn't have to be a last resort. I mean, they, it's, not a, it's not a highly risky treatment. So uh, I, when I think of last resorts, I always think of treatments that um, may be effective but are also very risky. And ECT really isn't a, a, a highly risky treatment if you look at medical treatments in general. Given the choice between doing going what I went experience through what I experienced with with the psychotropic medications again, or I, I I don't I don't even like to go into how dark the other things I'd rather do are, but like I I mean it's re, it's really horrible. But I'd rather like you know be be burned alive and and locked up in prison for for decades and stuff like that. You know it's, it's just that bad. Whereas ECT. Though, although I don't want to do it again, um, that you know, it's more it's more take it or leave it. It's like it's it's more. Um, there's no hard, immense pain in, involved. <laughs> Jessica Goldstein, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, my mom uh, went under shock treatments, ECT treatments, uh, a few years ago, I think. I don't know, we weren't really talking at the time. I think that the side effects can't be um, brushed under the rug, that lots of people suffer memory loss, some of them suffer serious memory loss, and people should look at that. They should weigh the potential of the benefit that it can provide them with a side effect. They should um, talk to their doctor, more importantly even, talk to other people who have had the treatment. My name is Brian Vashon. I am a uh, retired business executive and I'm currently a communications consultant. ECT was recommended to me by a psychiatrist and I had uh, 13 sessions. But I talked to more people for whom it's, uh, they say it saved their lives. And I think that it ought to be available. Every treatment out there in the psychiatric world, with the exception of talk therapy, seems to have some side effect. You take a drug, you take Prozac, you take other um, powerful drugs, and they can have all kinds of side effects. And people generally accept the side effects as the price of getting this treatment. Each time I did it, um, I was, I was hopeful that maybe that one would work. And not only did they not work, but I felt pretty awful afterwards. I mean, after I came out of the anesthesia, I just really felt badly. Treatment is useful during pregnancy and for postpartum psychosis. And I have treated several women who were pregnant with a severe depression because they were unwilling to give medications because they were afraid they might harm the fetus. It's like, it's like night and day really. It really depends um, on the patient's level of depression. Sometimes they're just in the hospital a few days, they're admitted, um, they're evaluated, they begin the treatments and after maybe three or four treatments they'll be discharged to outpatient treatments and they'll continue um, as, out, as an outpatient with the ECT. I have for the last year been doing maintenance, which is uh, one treatment a month, and there are practically no short-term memory issues at all, and I feel very grateful for that. And uh, it seems to be this is the longest period I've ever gone without having a major depression. I don't even know if she thinks they worked, but I can tell that she's a different person. I feel like a lot of times they don't, know, like people don't know how they're acting, so they don't see it. I mean, she didn't see any of the stuff that she did to us, so I doubt she 
yeah. saw what she was doing to herself either. I don't, it's so hard to say whether I did anything to help me or not, or, or that I feel better or whatever from it. Um, it definitely affects your memory a bit, but it comes back to you. There are a few things that, um, it didn't seem to come back unless my memory was drugged somehow. Someone showed me photographs or something. I think it, it was, it was probably helpful in making me feel better following all that hellish treatment I was given. about 32 years and I worked in ECT uh, all told four years. Well my name is Konstantin Nikiforov. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. I'm an attending psychiatrist at St. Luke's Roosevelt Center Medical Center and I, um, I'm in charge of ECT program and I'm also a geriatric psychiatrist. I've, as I did, I think people expect to see this huge seizure the patient experiences a huge seizure and all you might see is the big toe moving or a thumb or finger moving when um, the current is administered. Uh, it, again, it's not for everybody. It is for selective conditions. It's mostly for mood disorders. For mood disorders, it's, it's good for acute symptoms. Let's say for somebody who is severely depressed, depression with catatonia, with psychomotor retardation, uh, People with bipolar disorder who are depressed, who are manic. Worked on inpatient psych unit and we had a really close team. Uh, we helped each other out, we supported each other. We had to because there were times when people got violent and had to put them in seclusion. My name is Walt Kutrick. Um, I'm a master's level psychologist. Very close, he's my best friend. Um, Walter and I worked together and uh, he's still working at Shepherd Pratt in admissions. Um, some of the stigma that people have needs to, uh, the curtain has to be pushed back and... <laughs> you know, people with electric chairs, so it's a very negative image of using that electricity actually to do some harm. <laughs> and uh, there is something about electricity and about the name of the treatment, electric shock, it actually the old name. People have to see what it is and not, you know, not fear it. Perpetually facing issues is facing issues with the government and the FDA on regulating it. It's facing issues of how the public accepts it or doesn't accept it. Um, it's a treatment that will probably never stop having issues. The whole field of ECT now is working on how to, how to optimize the treatment, how to deliver the most effective treatment with uh, the least possible of degree of side effect. And now from ECT there are other so-called methods of, of treatment developed. I'm Chip Fisher, president of Fisher-Wallace Laboratories. Fisher-Wallace Laboratories produces a cranial electrotherapy stimulation device which treats depression, anxiety, and insomnia, and is used as a non-drug therapy for the treatment of those disorders. My partner had been stuck in a building in 9-11 and was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. He didn't want to take drugs. He was an addictionologist as well as a cell biologist and a scientist by training, and uh, decided that he wanted to search for non-drug therapy. He was introduced to the 
inventor of this device at a medical convention used it successfully, um, there's no feeling. You don't feel anything at all. It's a microcurrent, so you're not going to. You may see a little bit of a flashing light because this is a bipolar square waveform. I know, unfortunate cases when people, for some, for some other reasons, not related to ECT, but related to maybe some other medical issues, had to stop ECT or we couldn't do ECT anymore, and and they would become like permanently disabled. They would not function, and you know, they just, you know, they would, their life will go down downhill. That's the. That's it in a nutshell. Oh, they do. The tingler is in the theater. I warned the audience. No. No, you'd start a panic. We've got to be quiet and careful. But we've got to find it.